Hello, I'm Steve Collins. I'm a doctor of Chinese medicine, and today we're going to talk about Chinese medicine, what it is, how it works, and some of the tools that we use when treating patients. Now, Chinese medicine has a history of over 3,000 years. It is a very clinically relevant medicine, and today it is just as powerful as it was 3,000 years ago. It is a fully developed medical model. It is separate from Western medicine. By fully developed, that means that it can handle many different problems, many different complaints. There are some things that Chinese medicine does very well. There are some things that, like Western medicine, it doesn't do so well. Part of the job of a doctor of Chinese medicine is to be able to differentiate those things and to be able to say, well, these things that Chinese medicine can handle, we can possibly help you with. One of the central concepts of Chinese medicine is that of qi. What is qi? Qi is nothing mystical, it is nothing magical. All that qi is, is the fundamental energy of life. Every living thing has qi. Insects, plants, animals, people, every living thing has qi. In people, qi is that which allows the heart to beat, it allows the nerves to conduct impulses, it allows the blood to flow. Sometimes qi can become stagnated, sometimes it can become deficient, sometimes it can essentially become out of balance. When qi is out of balance, disease or pathology presents. Chinese medicine is essentially all about maintaining balance or restoring balance to the body. And we do this by harmonizing the body's qi. Sometimes we strengthen or cultivate the body's qi using several tools such as acupuncture or herbs. Now how does qi flow through the body? Qi flows through the body through a series of channels or meridians, some of which you can see on this diagram. The best way to think of these channels is to imagine a river. And you know how water saturates the banks of a river? Well, that's how qi saturates the tissues. It flows through the channels. And we can access the qi through a series of points. There are over 360 points on the body. Think of these points as ports along the river. Some of these ports are little one-horse towns with a stop sign and a post office. There's not much there. Some of these points are major points that have influence on many different parts of the body and communicate with other parts of the body. So there are essentially two difficult parts of Chinese medicine. The first is figuring out what's going on with the patient. And the second is determining which points to use to treat a given problem. Once we determine what's going on with the patient, then we can use a number of tools to treat that patient. Now in Chinese medicine, when we talk about organs, and we talk about the heart and the lungs and the spleen and the kidney and the liver. We're talking about a whole constellation of things. For example, the heart. When I talk about the heart in Western medicine, I'm talking about the myocardium and only the myocardium and the electrical system that runs the, the heartbeat. But in Chinese medicine, when I talk about the heart, I'm not talking solely about this. I'm talking about a whole constellation of things, including the small intestine, 
summertime, the color red, the tongue, the emotion of joy, hot foods. So I'm talking about a whole constellation when I talk about the heart. And one of the wonderful things about the, the medicine itself is that it does not separate mind from body. And it looks at the body as a whole. So when I talk about the heart, I'm also talking about its relation to the kidneys. I'm talking about its relation to consciousness or awareness. I'm talking about its relationship with dreams. I'm talking about many, many things. And so when a patient comes to us with complaints, after a thorough examination and looking at the tongue, and feeling the pulse in each wrist, both of which are extremely important diagnostic tools in Chinese medicine, we can arrive at what we call a pattern, which is the same thing as a diagnosis, or equivalent to a diagnosis. At that point, then we can determine which points to use to treat the patient, and then which tools we're going to use, whether we're going to use acupuncture, cupping, gua sha, tweena, dietary therapy, herbal therapy, plum blossom, or whatever technique we choose. So in the next few minutes, I'm going to demonstrate some of these techniques. It's important that you understand that if you choose to go to a doctor of Chinese medicine, that you find a practitioner that has gone through at least three to four years of education in Chinese medicine. I myself have had four years of school in Chinese medicine. In many states, different professions can study a very short amount of time, about 100 hours, place needles in you and call it acupuncture. So you must make sure that the practitioner that you see is a doctor of oriental medicine or a licensed acupuncturist. Chinese needles are different from Western needles in several aspects. You know how when you go to the doctor's office and you get a shot, it really hurts? Well, that's because those needles are about this big. And they're hollow. And at the end, at the tip, they're cut on a slant. It's called a bevel. Chinese, Chinese needles, on the other hand, are solid. They're about as thick as one of the hairs on your head. And at the tip, they're rounded, sort of like a ballpoint pen. So when I place them in your body, Actually, two things don't occur. You don't bleed, and it doesn't hurt. Now, you might feel the needle break the skin, but it's certainly nothing compared to a hypodermic syringe. So now I'm going to place a couple of needles in Tracy for general purpose. This is a treatment that can, it's a general purpose all around treatment designed to kind of harmonize her chi and to strengthen her chi. The first needle I'm going to place, however, is not part of the general prescription. It is a point right between the eyes that I usually put into new patients because it's a wonderfully calming, centering point. Typically patients uh, who get this point, typically patients who get this point request it over and over again. Now, when I put the needles in, I'm looking for a feeling of heaviness or dullness or a throbbing or an aching. The first time I put the needles in, it's not uncommon for patients not to experience that, but typically after two or three treatments, they feel it. All right, this is a 40 gauge needle, one half inch. This is the smallest needle that I use. 
These are the needles that we place in the face and in very sensitive areas of the body. So I'm going to place this in our model's forehead. There. Okay. Now I'm going to place some needles in her in her uh, legs. Okay, now I'm going to place needles in a point along the spleen channel and a point on the stomach channel. So what I'm doing is I'm finding the point, the points in a generally a specific area, and then I can feel the point. So I locate the point. And place it. That's it. How do you feel? Fine. Okay. I'm going to place the point, place the next needle in the opposite foot, same point. And now for the points on the stomach channel. All right, so I've just placed needles in our model's legs. If she were a real patient, I would leave the needles in for 20 minutes. I would leave the room, come back after 10 minutes, and stimulate the needles. What that means is I would kind of tweak them or twist them a little bit, and then leave and come back after another 10 minutes for a total of 20 minutes. And that would essentially constitute a treatment. Now the choice of points is not arbitrary. What that means is if you ask four doctors of Chinese medicine for a list of points for any given conditions, you can get five different answers and they can all be correct. So there are many paths up the mountain to treating a patient. I prefer to use the fewest number of points possible. I'm going to tweak the needle. I want you to tell me when it feels heavy. Okay. 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 At this point, I would leave the needles in for another ten minutes. Okay. At the end of the treatment, I'm going to remove the needle. see no blood. I removed the needles and put them immediately into a um, disposable. So, so when I put the needles in, what am I doing? What am I treating? Well, let's say a patient comes with a complaint of headaches, for example. In Chinese medicine, any given complaint, such as headaches, isn't, I don't see it as your primary problem. I see headaches as a branch response to a deeper problem. So if I can determine the root cause of the problem and I can treat that problem effectively, then the branches kind of take care of themselves. Now, there are times when I can put out fires. For example, if you came in, if you walked in the door with a splitting headache, I can many, many times get rid of that headache within five seconds with acupuncture. 
But that doesn't get rid of the cause of the headache. To do that, I have to go to the root problem. And that's one of the wonderful differences between Western medicine and Chinese medicine. Now, Western medicine is by far the most powerful medical model on the planet. No one should dispute that. Anytime that you can give a patient a medicine, put them asleep, cut open their chest, operate on their heart, and wake them up again, that's pretty powerful. Chinese medicine is by far the most elegant model on the planet. It works much more subtly, but much more elegantly by harmonizing the patient's body. It is a very clinical, efficacious medicine. It has obvious, measurable results. So the purpose of putting in the needles is to effect a positive change within the patient's body, essentially allowing the body to balance itself without using an outside, um, outside influence such as medication. For certain points, that can be used to treat specific conditions. For example, if a patient is complaining of low back pain, there are certain points that we know are very good for treating low back pain. One of these points is on the ankle. Now remember, this medicine is counterintuitive to the Western mind. It doesn't make sense. Why would I put a needle in the ankle to treat your back? Well, the fact is, it works. So I'm going to show you that point. Although our model isn't complaining of low back pain, for the sake of this demonstration, I'll put the needle in. This is a point on the bladder channel right here. This is point number bladder 62. And we choose this point for several reasons. One, because the bladder channel itself goes all the way up the spine to the back of the head. And actually, it actually begins, it starts at the eye, travels over the head, over the scalp, down the back, down the back of the leg, and exits at the toe. But this particular point is very good for treating low back pain. I'm going to use a guide tube to assist in this point.